it's been my experience that nothing will ruin a good alliance faster than a lack of leadership. So they really are highly integrated. And alliances is, is something that many companies do, if not every company, but very few of them have elevated it to a science and a staff or line position, which really is given both respect and uh, career opportunities. So leadership is an essential aspect of strategic alliance uh, implementation and also the strategizing of it. And the reason is that if you are thinking strategically about your organization, you're probably going to go through an analysis of should we build something ourselves, should we buy it through an acquisition, or should we align? And for many organizations uh, that had, certainly in the technology field, that had formerly built it themselves, they have found that the capital investment needed is huge and sometimes too large, certainly in the capital markets, as they've been the last few years, for them to do it on their own. And so therefore, having a series of alliances has become a critical competitive factor and a success factor. Cisco is an example of a company that has been very good at strategic alliances, primarily with, with some of their partners like IBM and HP and Intel and so on. Intel also does strategic alliances. There are many companies in the entertainment field. Disney, for example, has multiples of alliances uh, with companies uh, that are like McDonald's, who also has strategic alliances. So when you look through the Fortune 1000, you will find that most of those companies have some kind of alliance activity, whether they characterize them as important enough to have a chief alliance officer, which by the way, uh, Cisco has had a top alliance officer for their 150 alliance managers. But whether they do that or not, um, it's interesting to see how few companies actually have codified their alliance methodology into an alliance competency that goes across the organization.